pie is a dangerous combination. It starts off with an Oreo pie crust and you slather on a thick layer of peanut butter. Next, we're gonna scoop out a giant chunk of sweet cream ice cream and mix in some Reese's peanut butter cups and add a little bit of fudge. We wanna gently fold the fudge in. Now we're gonna add this on top of our layer of peanut butter. Smooth it all out. You wanna make sure your spade gets nice and wet so it's really easy to smooth the ice cream out. If you're impatient like me, you can throw the ganache on now, but you probably should let it sit in the freezer for a little while. Finish it off with some peanut butter butter cream. If you've ever had one, you would agree that we all agree that there are way more wheels in this world than there are doors, but have you seen the largest tire in the world? It is in Michigan. Before you try to say this is not an actual wheel, it just looks like one. The story goes, this is an old Ferris wheel that they covered to make it look like a tire. I think it's time my dad killed my cat when I was a kid. It was actually my sister's cat, but it hated her and loved me. As you know, most cats are elusive and they can be gone and hide and you'll never know where they're at until they randomly pop out again someday. But we were on day three and I was starting to get a little worried that my cat was gone. On. So I started doing all the typical things that would make her come running out of hiding. I opened a can of her special food. I dropped ice cubes on the ground, all these random things. The part that was so weird to me is that my parents did not seem concerned at all. She was taken to a local shelter and if nobody adopted her, I'm assuming they put her down. I know this means that my dad didn't technically kill my cat, but I still consider that this is the worst cake I've ever decorated my entire life. Four years ago today, a lady asked me to make her daughter a horse cake. At the time, those unicorn cakes were extremely popular. You know, the ones with their eyes closed. So I decided to try to make one of those, but like a horse. And it was one of those things where it just doesn't look right. So you keep trying to fix it. And the more you change things, just the worst it was getting. I can't believe it's been four years, but happy birthday, Jude. I'm not nearly as embarrassed as I was back then, but you've never seen a waffle ice cream sandwich before i told you they're so easy to make you just need to take two egg waffles and toast them up real quick and then slap some ice cream between them and smush them together but please do not let your ice cream sit as long as we did our ice cream became a giant soupy mess this usually creates a big problem and when you go to bite into it or you squish it the ice cream gets all over you thank you you're welcome and if you're evelyn before tonight where do you see yourself in five years? I can't even tell you where I'll be in a few weeks. Never would I have imagined two years ago when I started making these videos at an ice cream shop that I'd be opening my own ice cream shop here in New York City. Or that 90% of my friends would be people that I met online through making videos. So I challenge you just to have fun, make some videos, and maybe your life will change just like all of ours has. I'm always asked, hey Dylan, coffee ice cream. You want to start off with some freeze-dried coffee and stir in some ice cream base. Once that's combined decently well, you want to pour all of it in the machine and then pour in some base to wash that all down. Don't forget to scrape the bladder so you don't waste any. Once that's been in the ice cream machine for about eight minutes or so, it's time to come out. It should be fluffy and thick and creamy just like this. This is batch number one. Each batch makes two large pans of You've never seen an ice cream cake made like this before. You use the blade to cut through the tub and then you pull the wire through and it creates a nice clean slice. Once we cut that through and get a nice clean slice, we're going to go ahead and add our piece of cake on top and then trim off all the excess ice cream and throw that ice cream on top of the tub. This next part really threw me off because I was not used to this, but they actually frost their cakes in soft serve ice cream, which let me tell you, does not spread like nice white fluffy frosting. To match the Superman theme of the ice cream, I went ahead and colored my soft serve blue and red. Then it's time to smooth that all over the sides and get some nice crisp edges on our rectangle. Then for some more fun and more color, I added some fruity pebbles to the side and the top. Then we're adding a dark blue border to the bottom and the top. Then I add a little bit of red and yellow silly string frosting to it. I bet you this is Tink's hot girl sundae. The moment I found out one of my favorite creators had their very own sundae, it was immediately added to my bucket list to make it. This giant sundae has a scoop of each of Craig's eight flavors. And everything here is vegan. But then you're going to sprinkle on chunks of cookies and brownies, drizzle all of that with some nice fudge. And we're still not done. Then it's time for sprinkles, cherries, whipped cream, and a huge sparkler. This is by far the biggest sundae I've ever made. I'd say this giant thing is worthy of its name. This is extremely controversial. What are your thoughts on ice cream for breakfast? I'd say most American breakfasts are full of sugar anyway, so it's probably just about the same. This is a maple French toast cereal sundae. I don't think you would eat this for breakfast, but I guess you probably could. It's layers of maple syrup, French toast cereal, and vanilla custard. And since we're out west, we're going to add a chocolate cowboy hat for fun. It's not my favorite, but I've definitely ate ice cream for breakfast. This is the most shocking chicken sandwich you've ever seen. Look at those glazed buns. Yes, this is a donut chicken sandwich. While everyone's out there fighting who's the best chicken sandwich, Alexandra is definitely making the sweetest. But don't let your eyes fool you. There's something weird going on with this chicken sandwich. If you've been watching that new show about cakes being real or fake, you may have already started to see a trend here. This is not actually chicken. We're making this with the top of a donut. Please be honest. Did we really trick you that this is real chicken? Come on, you gotta agree. 
would you eat spicy ice cream personally i think it's more sour than spicy but people call it spicy it's a combination of chamoy and tahine and mango and watermelon italian ice then we're gonna layer on even more chamoy and tahine and then put some dole whip on top this part was a little rough as i apologize for this monstrosity they encouraged me that i did better than some of their employees which i was shocked by and of course we had to add even more chamoy and tahine in the summer they add a nice large piece of watermelon but since it's out of season we're just putting these candies on it and then a regular straw and shoving this tamarind stick in it i'll admit it looked pretty bad before i put the tamarind stick in it and i think i made it even worse but i don't know you tell me i really don't think it's an odd combination but would you try eating these they're called arepas i apologize for not pronouncing it as beautifully as i should it's so fun to learn about new cultures through their food the best way i could think to describe the outside is it reminds me a little bit of cornbread but then you fill it with all these delicious things you can put whatever you want into it but these ones get sweet potato some greens and i believe it was pork then it gets topped off with these two sauces the first one is a cauliflower crema and it was absolutely delicious i hope the taste could make up for how bad of a wrap job i did on these i'm a pretty picky eater so i don't usually like to try new things but i could never catch a mochi in my mouth but i have a feeling my friends can so let's throw some mochi to them they just loki looked like a dog missing a tennis ball so let's see if jessica can do better and perfect shot she even finished it off with such a fun dance not only is it difficult to catch them you want to make sure you catch it because if not you're gonna get cornstarch all over you i'm so glad no one made me try this because i know for sure You've never seen an ice cream made after a caramel apple sucker. So buckle up, because this is going to be a fun one. These are the suckers I'm talking about. They normally become pretty popular in the fall. We start by filling up our cup with some caramel, and then she's going to add some frozen custard on top of that. Then it's our turn again to add a nice layer of caramel on top. But the only downside to eating it this way, as opposed to the sucker, is that you could get a brain freeze. It's going to be delicious. You're going to want to eat it way too fast. She's going to pack on a ton of green apple Italian ice. Then it's time for us to repeat all the last steps. Don't you just love how creative ice cream shops get when it comes to making their flavors? Like, I bet you love when I make these crazy ice cream sandwiches. So I was so happy when Alexandra suggested that we make French toast donuts, and she said I could make mine an ice cream sandwich. Once we dipped both of the donuts and cooked them, we added the ice cream, some caramel, and we even brulee some sugar on top. With her help, I'd say this is the fanciest ice cream sandwich I've probably ever made. Let us know if you'd rather try mine or hers. But it's honestly one of my favorite things that... This is the most unique root beer float I've ever made, and Ava was so excited to help me make it. She filled up a cup halfway with frozen custard, and then I threw on some root beer Italian ice. Then it was time to top it all off with a bunch of root beer. I think it's funny, she also said that she hopes this video makes her famous. I mean, I gotta say, have you ever wanted to try boba with ice cream? We're starting off with a layer of boba at the bottom of our cup, and then we're gonna add on some tea. I just kind of broke the glass door right here, but we're gonna add some Thai tea Italian ice on top. I love the way layering this makes this combo's colors really pop. We're gonna try to flatten this just a little bit. I did make a little bit of a mess, but we'll take care of that later. I think this is such a cool idea. I've never seen something like this before. They call it a boba rita, I believe. And then this gets topped off with some frozen custard. Every time I come to Vegas, I get introduced to these crazy new places. Yeah, this one came out kind of crooked. You know what these are? I didn't know what they were until I saw Encanto. In this scene right here, they're eating some that are just filled with cheese, but ours are called to be filled with a few other things. This one is red because it has beets in it. We're gonna cut this in half, and then it's time to add our fillings. The first one is this delicious cauliflower crema, then a chimichurri, some chopped up chicken, two avocado slivers, and then I added some of this orange sauce just because I thought it looked cool. But that makes me wonder, can we all collectively take a moment to just realize how insane it is that I'm in New York City, I'm throwing ice cream at somebody on top of the Empire State Building. How did I even get here just from making videos at my job? There's so many little things that happen, but mainly it's you. You've hit a few buttons a few times, and it's completely changed my entire life. And in turn, now I'm doing this. If you have ever once considered maybe you should make some videos, just please do it. You never know where it's going to take you, and you may end up throwing melted ice cream all over the top of the Empire State Building. Or starting your own business and changing your family's lives. There's so many opportunities waiting for you out there. Please just start making videos and posting them. Please. I mean, my dad got a lot of hate for killing my cat, but I promise he's a fantastic father. So fantastic that I was willing to make him his favorite ice cream and fly it all the way across the country for him. He loves sweet cream ice cream with a lot of chocolate shavings in it, so I made sure to put a ton of extra ones in for him. TSA did a couple extra checks on this one, but we were all good. Happy early birthday, Dad. You're awesome. Don't listen to the haters.
tiniest ice cream cupcakes you've ever seen. I know there are still 271 days until Christmas, but this is one of my favorite Tiny Tuesdays I've ever made. It's a tiny chocolate shell filled with cake and then topped with ice cream and frosting. And then I add a couple little sprinkles on top to add some Christmas tree lights. Not only are these tiny and look super cool, you can make them so fast. So I made a bunch. I think these are the cutest and they're the food can be so dangerous there are people out there that can smell the dust of a peanut and it can make them pass away that's why whenever i'm making food i try to be as mindful as possible but if nobody lets me know they have an allergy i can't do anything about it but if you do let me know i will do everything in my power to make sure that you have something that you can enjoy and not get sick from and if you're the type of employee that finds out someone has an allergy and gets a bad attitude and doesn't want to help them please just take a step back and put yourself in their shoes they didn't choose this life they just want to enjoy something simple like ice cream so you taking a couple extra careful steps can save their life people seem to forget all the time that you ever think about how chocolate and vanilla are arch enemies when it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to always pit chocolate versus vanilla they actually taste amazing together especially in ice cream cakes like this it is a little funny to me though that both flavors come from beans we're gonna wrap this vanilla ice cream cake in thick fudge ganache then for a nice pop of color we're gonna go ahead and pick it up and then cover the sides in rainbow sprinkles so whenever you think about the most default flavors of ice cream chocolate and vanilla just remember that they can go good together it's kind of like salt and pepper i don't know maybe i'm just weird but do you enjoy having a service industry job? I'm curious to see because a lot of people look down on us and think less of us for having service industry jobs. But if you look on this app, there are tons of us now that share our jobs with you every day and we have millions of followers. Most of the time my comments are positive and we're all enjoying and having fun and it's just ice cream. But occasionally I do come across somebody that's like, why do you think you're so cool you work at an ice cream place? Considering that I do work at an ice cream place, it is pretty cold most of the time, so they're not wrong. And I'm just a little confused because who wouldn't want to make ice cream every day for a living? It's a pretty nice setup. But if you do enjoy having a service industry job, I'd love to hear why. Personally, I love that I get to meet new people every day and I get to impact their life somehow. Whether that's just putting a smile on their face, helping them celebrate something, or even brightening up a rough day for them. But other people like the constant craziness and productivity of it all. Where at the end of the day, you go home knowing that you did a lot and you got a lot done. But all of this really has me wondering. Have you had the birthday cake remix? It's one of our most popular signatures, and this is it as a cake. This is one of my favorite cakes to make because it looks so cool in my opinion. Since it's a rectangle, we gotta make sure we get those crisp edges. Once we smooth out all of our edges, it's gonna be time to add our sprinkles on the side. The sprinkles only go halfway up, so we get a nice contrast between the sprinkles, the white frosting, and then the chocolate ganache are about to drip down the top. Usually we would cover the whole top with ganache, but they just asked for a little border of the ganache dripping down the sides. Once the ganache hardened, it was time to go ahead and pipe out our shell border. Then we're going to add some more sprinkles to round off the look and some brownies. These cakes just always come out so cool. I love the way they look. So let me know.